about this. Guess who owned the banks that financed the slave trade? Not only did they own the banks that financed the slave trade, guess who owned the insurance company that insured the slaves? They did. So do y'all see a money-making scheme? This is why he say, them that say they are Jews and are not. He said, I'm going to make them what? Bow down before your feet. Or worship at your feet and know and let them know that I have loved you. We keep looking at the people and we, 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 we act like we don't understand what's going on in the world. And this is why we have to wake up, y'all draw. We have to wake up and smell the coffee. See what's going on around you. And stop looking at everything on the news and, stuff and what it says. Because they're going to give you information and only want you to believe what the information that's given. That's used to distract you and keep you, you occupied uh, your time looking at that while they're doing something else behind the scenes. Fake news. Yeah, fake news. Because what you have to realize, y'all ever notice that the people that are in the land are trying to leave the land? Why would you say you're the people of the land, but because of the war and all the terrorism and stuff, you want to leave the land? But y'all know where they trying to go to? They were trying to go back to Crimea. Why would they be trying to go back to Crimea? And if, um, the treaty that they're trying to pass is called the right of return. So in order for it to be a right of return, it means they had to come from there. Do y'all know what Crimea is in Russia? So why would they be trying to go back to Russia? They're because they're, they're Russian, Russian Jews. Go to Russia today and see how you're treated as a so-called African-American. When they see you go to Israel, because you know, uh, depending on which flight you get on to go to Israel, one flight takes you to Russia, then bring you back to Israel, and they frown upon you there because they know who you are. But then the most I talk about the battle of Gog and Magog, who did y'all think Gog and Magog was? That's Russia and Turkey. But don't y'all hear a lot in the news now about who? President Trump? And you see all these people that connection with who? The Russians? Because the people that call themselves Ashkenazi Jews. That's their, that's their, um, their lineage. Do y'all know the Khazars? Where did they come from? Khazaria, which is southern what? Russia around southern Georgia or Russia. The Ashkenazi Jews descend from the Khazars. And the Khazars come from Khazaria, which was around Georgia or Russia. That's why they're looking for a what? A right of return. But once we begin to recognize this stuff, we can begin to look at the prophecies and see why, why they make so much sense. Huh? Is that Gold Check too? Russia, Georgia, Gold Check. Um, I'm, I'm not sure, uh, So, what we're saying is, let's begin to look at these things and begin to take some self autonomy and just begin to study these things, y'all. You have to ask yourself, why is Russia all of a sudden is of a great importance? Every day you turn on the television, Russia this, Russia that. Russia this, who's been in communication with this, who's been in communication with that? Because these prophecies have to be fulfilled. And if he speaks about a war, uh, God, the battle of God and Magog, God and Magog are going to have to come forth and identify themselves. Go ahead, Maury. Verse 23. And the heaven that is over your head shall be brass. And the earth that is under you shall be iron. And your Lord shall make the rain 
of your land powder and dust. From heaven shall it come down upon you until you be destroyed. Wow. Yehovah shall cause thee to be smitten before your enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them. <coughs> and shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. Stop right there. That's very important. I wish I had a, a, a projector here. Because when they show you the route of the um, transatlantic slave trade in which direction they went, do y'all know there are only seven passages? Read that again, Maury. Verse 25. And Yahuwah shall cause thee, or cause you to be spent before your enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them. He said, you should flee seven ways before them. And that's a map when you study the transatlantic slave trade, they show the, the passages. You have seven routes of passages that we will escort and take it into captivity out here. That's crazy. We just said that uh, Sovereign or your will should make the rain of thy land powder and dust. If he's gonna make the land, uh, the rain of your land powder and dust, that means you're not getting any rain. You in straight famine. We know that's to be the case because there's many times we can open up the scriptures and go see where the only thing they had to eat was their children. Am I lying? Mm -hmm. The only thing Yahshua had to eat was their children. And guess what? They did eat their children. Go ahead, Mark. Verse 25. Yahuwah shall cause you to be smitten before your enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them, and flee seven ways before them. And thou shalt be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. You say, they shall be removed where? Into all the kingdoms into of the earth. Into all the kingdoms of the earth. You shall be just coming from Germany, going into Israel. From concentration camp, you should be coming from all nations. Go ahead, Warren. And your carcass shall be meat unto all fowls of the air, and unto the beasts of the earth, and no man shall fray them away. Yahuwah will smite you with the blotch of Egypt, and with the emeralds, and with the scab, and with the itch, whereof thou cannot be healed. Yahuwah shall smite thee with madness, and blindness, and astonishment of heart, and thou shalt grow at noondays as the blind groupeth in darkness. And thou shalt not prosper in your ways. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. And no man shall save thee. Stop right there. It says, Thou shalt grow at noonday as the blind groupeth in the darkness. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. That said a whole lot. Don't we grow up at noonday? Meaning that. We're the only people walking around with no kind of sense of what? Urgent, no kind of sense of belonging, no kind of sense of we just, it's like we're in a standstill in a stupor. Everybody, they prepare, they set up for things, they do this, that, and the other. We have one thing in our mind, and we get locked in on that one thing, and we cannot move forward. Then he said the ox knows his crib and the uh, the ass knows it's crib and the ox is, uh, with, I, I got it back. The ox knows it's part of the ass and the master crib. Right. He's, but Israel do not consider. His, his people don't even know. They don't even consider. Everybody is, uh, uh, everybody around us. Y'all don't see how into their heritage and culture they are? Come right here downtown to the case of March 17, or whatever uh, St. Patrick's Day is. And watch what you see. They're always celebrating their heritage and who they are as a people. They're proud of their heritage. What do we celebrate? <laughs> exactly. We just have a month of black history. That's it. We really don't even get it that. Then with our, with our biggest celebration is uh, what? You know, black people love Fourth of July. Oh, yeah. Independence Day. 
<laughs> you still laying locked. You locked up, they can't go home. <laughs> but you, you celebrate Independence Day. Come on now. Go, go ahead, boy. Thou shalt be a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Stop right there. During the transatlantic slave trade, during slavery, did not we enter into marriage with these women? Or uh, other slave women? But what happened? The master. Did master come and take and sleep with her whenever he wanted to? And what did you do to master? Nothing. Nothing. Now watch more we confirm that. Go ahead. Thou shalt be troth the wife, and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build a house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and shalt not gather the grapes thereof. Thine ox shall be slain before thine eyes, and thou shalt not eat thereof. Thine ass shall be violently taken away from before your face, and shall not be restored to you. Your sheep shall be given unto thy enemies, and thou shalt have none to rescue them. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. He said, Thy sons and daughters shall be given unto another people. And what? And thy eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. Your eyes shall, you shall long for them all the day long. Is that not what happened? Your children were taken and given to another nation? Our ancestors' children, I should say. And when slavery ended, did they not walk the streets? You y'all have heard of slave narratives? You can go and read them. They talk about the condition, how after they were freed, how many people just walked from door to door, town to town, asking, do you know this person? Do you that know that person? Because they were looking for that loved one that had been taken from them and given to another people. Or their children who were taken from them and given to other people. Um, overseers and masters. But anyway, we're going to stop right there and we're going to pick back up next week and we'll finish this off. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. At this time, we're going to call Maury up.